Broadcasting from the beautiful Hill Country in Texas, this is OneRadioNetwork.com. Pleasant good morning to you. This is Patrick Timpone, and you've got one radio network.com. It is a froggy Tuesday morning here in Central Texas. Oh, it's thicker than pea soup out there. You don't want to do, you don't want to be flying your drone today. You could lose your drone, then you could never get it back if you fly your drone over places. Well, good morning. Uh, 888-663-6386 is our telephone number. That's 888-663-6386. Write that number down. You'll probably need it to call and say hi to Andreas Moritz or Dr. Jack Pruitt today. That's who's on the show. Uh, We love talking to Andreas. He's a good one. Uh, Just a second. Dr. Jack Pruitt who's an OBGYN who hung out with uh, Dr. Ron Paul for a lot of years. And Dr. Pruitt says, the gods must be crazy, or why are we so crazy? And he says, well, it's because that if you look at the Bible and stuff, it's, it's really not the God you're thinking about when you look at the biblical God. It's actually from another planet. Wow. Well, that'll be fun. That's in one hour. I'm uh, Andrew Goss uh, tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Michael King, Vitality Herbs, coming on Thursday at Julia Shopik. It's quite an interesting lady talking about honest medicine. We could use a little bit of that. Open phone Friday. Uh, a lady um, cured herself of breast cancer next week. We're going to go back to Europe and talk to Allison Adams about mercury and stuff. We liked her so much and really just barely you know, dipped our toe in the water with her work and so she's back and more about cancer too next week and then F. William Engel uh, to um, give us uh, an update on what's going on in the world over in Europe the Russian people are starting to, to protest 50,000 people on the streets over there what's that about and then we'll kind of wrap things up before our Christmas vacation with Dr. Richard Massey, special holiday show, and also Open Phone Friday. And we're going to give away some presents and stuff from some of our sponsors. So our email this morning and every morning is patrick at oneradionetwork.com. We're going to move out to uh, near Greenville, South Carolina, and say hi to Andreas Moritz, who has written so many books, Timeless Secrets of Health and Rejuvenation, one of his Classics, The Amazing Liver and Gallbladder Flush, Cancer is Not a Disease, um, Lifting the Veil of Duality. And his latest book is Vaccine Nation, Poisoning the Population One Shot at a Time. Senor Moritz, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Patrick. (laughs) Nice to talk to you. Do we have a beep machine or something? Do you hear that little beep going on? Beep? I don't hear a beep. That's all right. I hear a beep, but I hear things in my ears all the time. Doctor, can you help me? What's... <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Enjoy the music. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Is that what you tell your patients? They, they said, I have tinnitus and uh, enjoy the music. Well, yeah, there, there's always uh, a form of friction that creates extra sounds and extra frequencies that the person may hear. And usually it is because of congestion. Uh, The congestion occurs uh, usually in the gastrointestinal tract and toxins are backwashing all the way up into the throat area, the chest and throat. And from there they move into the auditory ducts or eustachian tubes. And once they start clogging up uh, the the ear uh, ducts, then uh, you have friction and the increased friction there uh, creates extra sounds, and so it's not such a mysterious uh, ailment. It's actually quite straightforward, 
and by cleaning out the intestinal tract uh, and improving the digestion and avoiding lymph congesting foods and mucus producing foods such as meat, chicken, fish, eggs, uh, cheese particularly, and milk, milk uh, products, then uh, the congestion subsides, uh, the bacterial growth in these parts of the body subsides too, uh, there will be no toxins produced in the inner ear area, and uh, the ears will be clear and free. <laughs> so uh, similar to what we find oftentimes with the little kids who get ear infections and they get the tubes in the ears and all that, uh, so often over the years we've heard that the moms that take the kids off of the commercial dairy from the local Safeway and stuff, that um, the, the, the ear infections go away. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's one of the easiest things to clear up. Uh, and uh, you, However, uh, the typical approach would be take the child to the doctor and the doctor will prescribe antibiotics because parents are very concerned that an infection could uh, cause ser- serious damage, uh, at least you know, to the ears, if not to the rest of the body. And uh, then, uh, you know, even though doctors know very well that there is virt- virtually no, no advantage uh, over doing nothing at all, uh, giving antibiotics, uh, it just gives them a reprieve of about half a day. Uh, so there's really nothing uh, you know, better than dealing with it naturally, uh, putting the child on a sort of a clean, neat uh, diet, avoiding sugar. Sugar always produces mucus. And so allowing the body to decongest, uh, taking warm fluids, water, lemon and honey water. Honey is a decongestant, so is lemon. And uh, allowing the body to uh, deal with it um, usually quicker, much faster and without side effects by um, you know, you know, doing that instead of taking recourse to antibiotics, which how, you know, if, if, you have, uh, if you give the child antibiotics even just once, uh, new studies have shown it can destroy their uh, bacteria population uh, that consists of friendly or probiotic bacteria for an entire lifespan. One time. Uh, so, yes, for the entire life. Uh, so once you damage the probiotic bacteria population, it's hard to get it back, even if you take probiotic bacteria. That's really amazing. You know what, Andreas? Hang up the phone real quick. I'm going to redial. It's, it seems that I'm hooked up with some other phone, and here that it keeps beeping. I don't know if you can hear that, but um, just hang up real quick, and I'm going to just okay. dial you right back in two seconds, okay? Okay, okay. Any better? I think so. I don't hear the beep, but maybe it's just other than earthly people wanting to get my attention and talk to me, Andres. Maybe that's what it is. It's it's just yeah, yeah. It's an alien invasion <laughs> in my head. Yeah, you know that's interesting. Uh, uh, by the way, you really have a a, a fellow. Uh, how long have you been at this, Andreas? It's almost thirty years, right? For about forty years now. My goodness, forty years. He was born in Germany. He's written so many books. His, his website is inner chi, I N N E R hyphen chi dot com. Medical intuitive, Ayurveda medicine, iridology. He also he does consultations via the telephone for people all over the world. And if you're interested, you can always go to his website. And I'm sure there's a place, Andreas, there where people email you. Is that how that works? Uh, yes, there is a uh, support um, email address. Okay, yep. inner hyphen chi dot com. If you'd like to be on the show this morning, it is triple eight six six three sixty three eighty six. We put you on hold. Pick it up live on. We're also broadcasting live every morning now on Natural News Radio dot com. Natural News Radio dot com. A great website. Uh, massive amount of people all over the world. Listen to naturalnewsradio.com. So it's an honor for us to get our shows out there even more. And I think it's been about three months now or so and loving the relationship with Mike Adams. So thank you, Mr. Mike, for allowing us to be on your great uh, network. Patrick Timpone and uh, email patrick at oneradionetwork.com. I do want to get into this whole autoimmune thing because I read a, a great article that you wrote and sent me because I'm on your list. And it's such so prevalent. But I want to just go back a minute to what you said. I was fascinated to hear you say that sugar had a connection with mucus. I mean, we think about 
commercial dairy and commercial cheese like that and mucusing up ourselves. But sugar, how does sugar translate into mucus? Well, basically, you know, sugar, and we're talking about refined sugar, um, not the sugar that you find in honey or that you find in uh, coconut, uh, in coconuts, for example, or other natural forms. Uh, the, the, the white sugar that people usually refer to as sugar is a commercially produced substance, just as salt, uh, table salt, is a refined uh, commercially produced substance that doesn't occur in nature in this form. And since the, you know, the refining of sugar is such a uh, complex process that involves numerous steps uh, that uh, you basically turn it into something that the body has no natural contract with to digest and absorb, or the body will uh, try to engulf it in the mucus. So the, the mucus is the body's way of protecting itself against that highly acid-forming substance. Typically, in natural form, uh, if sugar is contained in fruits or in other carbohydrates, uh, there are other substances in that same food that prevent the acidification of the body by the sugars contained in that food. But if you isolate uh, sugar and refine it and super refine it, it will basically deplete your body of minerals, and the body recognizes that as a threatening agent, and it will try to repel it or catch it um, before it can make its way uh, into the system or into the bloodstream where it can cause havoc. If the, if the sugar does make its way into the it can raise the uric acid, acid levels to uh, very high levels, and that can increase the damage or the incidence of damage in the blood vessels. And once you have that, um, or you have an accumulation of excessive uric acid crystals that the body can no longer get rid of because there's far too many, there's far too much of it in the blood. Then you can develop gout, um, a very painful condition, condition of the joints or other arthritic conditions. But the damage to the blood vessel walls can be severe, uh, particularly in the coronary arteries. When uh, the damage occurs, you will have an inflammatory response there, and the inflammation can lead to uh, bleeding, and the blood clot may escape uh, the blood vessel wall and enter the heart or the brain, which can cause a heart attack or a stroke. So it's not such a uh, simple thing. Well, have some sugar, have a little bit of ice cream and uh, whatever uh, your artificially produced uh, foods, then uh, you are putting yourself at risk uh, greatly. Uh, if, uh, you're developing heart disease uh, or high blood pressure or other you know, you know, uh, diseases of congestion. Uh -huh. uh, so pressure. when we hear about uh, young men, 50, 60, going in and, and seeing four or five arteries, I mean, the blood, you know, clogged up, and I've, this has happened to vegetarians, who yeah. and, and they call it I, I think they call it metabolic syndrome or syndrome X and there's there's a, too many of the complex carbs the wrong kind of carbs and also sugar can clog up your arteries uh, can or not oh absolutely sugar is one of the leading causes of uh, arterial block you think of you know, what the body does in order to prevent a heart attack uh, or a stroke, it's quite uh, incredible. It's, it's very innovative. Uh, basically, when there is an infl inflammatory response and uh, there are little lesions and wounds created in the artery walls given uh, the consumption of a lot of uh, high fructose corn syrup or, or sugar, which raises the uh, uric acid levels, then uh, the body will dispatch a, 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 a substance called uh, LDL, uh, bad cholesterol, uh, or VLDL, very low-density lipoprotein. So low-density lipoproteins are, are perfect to bandage uh, these little wounds and lesions along the coronary arteries, and they create a bandage, uh, basically a, a band-aid uh, to begin with, and if cont continuation of uh, consumption of these harmful substances 
uh, year occurs, then the body will uh, eventually create a, a more harder structure or to make sure that no blood clots escape and cause a heart attack or a stroke. So arterial sclerosis is not a disease. Uh, it should never be called a disease. It's actually a highly protective uh, you know, effort on behalf of the body to prevent the demise of the body um, through a heart attack or a stroke. Uh, when we take recourse to natural uh, diets and lifestyle patterns and clean out the body again, then uh, these uh, heart disease conditions, so-called heart disease conditions, where these are just protective mechanisms, they no, are no longer needed, and therefore the body will uh, recover quite quickly. And Twenty years ago, I had a huge number suddenly out of the blue. There were so many patients who had uh, chronic uh, heart conditions uh, from uh, anything from high blood pressure, damage to the heart, and uh, you know, and uh, infarctation, damage to the heart muscle, um, and blockages in the arteries, and they were completely reversed, totally reversed in a matter of six weeks. And that was shown by uh, tests uh, that were you know, done on these individuals. And all I you know, told them to do is change their diet and lifestyle, clean out the body, and uh, they were back to square one. I had the very clean, healthy arteries. Yeah. Well, and what kind of foods did you generally take them off of? Uh, any kind of sugar, definitely, uh, and also um, animal proteins, which are now known to increase the risk of heart disease uh, tremendously. There was a study done by the uh, National Institute of Cancer about three years ago on over 55,000 Americans, and they, sorry, 550,000 Americans. So that was a huge study, and they showed that uh, eating meat on a regular basis increased the risk of developing cancer, heart disease, diabetes, uh, and osteoporosis, and increased the risk of dying from these diseases by 20%. And that, that's a huge increase compared to a, a, a diet that didn't, um, you know, use these products. So there, there is a risk of, you know, by eating uh, either high concentration protein foods or um, sugars. Uh, Andreas Moritz is with us, uh, 888-663-6386, Patrick Timpone, One Radio Network and naturalnews.com. It is 17, 18 minutes after the hour. Good morning, 18 after 9 Central Time Live, every morning 9 to 11. So uh, you are definitely an advocate of vegetarian diet. Uh, you look great. This works really well for you. Um, what's the what, what are the kind of carbohydrates that you recommend that do not do the kind of things we're talking about, cause excess sugar in the blood. Is it just, just brown rice? No. Uh, yeah, many people believe that uh, you're know, having too much of a carb diet, high-carb diet, uh, can contribute to diabetes. And there's some truth to that. Uh, you know, however, the, the major uh, thing that we need to be concerned about is whether we digest the foods that we eat, because if we don't digest the foods we eat, it, they can contaminate the body, they ferment and putrefy the body, and uh, doesn't allow the nutrients to be absorbed properly, and that causes far more damage than the food itself. Yeah. So it's um, you know, I, I personally um, you know, eat uh, carbohydrates, I eat a lot of vegetables, uh, salads, uh, some fruit, uh, and eat, eat nuts and seeds, uh, you know, cooked vegetables, some raw vegetables, and um, oils and fats, uh, unrefined sea salt, spices and herbs. And uh, I don't seem to have any problems with any of this. Mm. And, but uh, you don't, yeah. you don't do a, a lot of wheat or corn, um, bread, those kinds of things. No, I'm, I'm not really interested. I, I like the fresh things more than yeah. uh, you know, things that are, you know. But I do eat some bread um, and or some rice cakes or, you know, I eat uh, you know, basmati rice, white basmati rice. It's very, very nutritious. Um, there are, it depends on the body type as well. If, if the, you know, in Ayurveda, there are diff three different major body type 
uh, groups, uh, the vata, pitta, and kapha type. Mm -hmm. The vata type is the very thin type, um, dry skin. Uh, if if it's you know, if he's unbalanced, uh, tendency to constipation. So if you give white rice uh, to a vata body type, they will get constipated. If you give them brown rice, uh, they will have relief from constipation. So the pitta body type is better off taking white basmati rice than the brown basmati rice because the brown rice gives them a lot of gas. So it depends on uh, the person. Uh, we shouldn't sure. uh, you know, say that every food, uh, particular food, is good for everyone. There is a difference between body types because each body type digests food in a slightly or majorly different way. Mm. And that, uh, you know, that's determined uh, by the secretion of particular gastric juices. Uh, the vata type doesn't make you know, very much hydrochloric acid, whereas the pitta type does uh, produce a lot. So there, there are differences in, in regard uh, to what the body is capable of doing. Um, the kapha body type doesn't make enough bile, so they, they uh, are actually better off uh, not eating too many oils and fats, whereas the vata type needs a lot of fats and oils, otherwise they dry out literally inside and outside. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's important to recognize uh, you know, the, the differences uh, between body types and not uh, just have one food for everyone. Sure, sure. Yeah, well said. Uh, I think that folks could look into some of the books of Dr. Vasant Lad, L-A-D, He's got some neat books, doesn't he, Andreas? And this Ayurveda idea of the different body types has been around, what, 5,000 years or so. I think there's yeah, something, exactly. there, definitely something to it. I mean, if you could actually look at it and say, well, this person could do good on white basmati rice and, and not do well on brown rice, that's pretty interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, I've, I've written extensively in my book, Timeless Secrets of Health and Rejuvenation, about uh, all the different body types and why uh, some are digesting certain foods, whereas they don't. You know, others don't digest. It's just like in the rest of nature, uh, a, a particular animal out in the wilderness uh, has a preference to certain foods and will never touch other foods. Yeah. Uh, so they have an instinctive, uh, you know, your way of determining what foods, what diet is good for them, and which one is not. Uh, likewise, uh, we are not all made in the same way. Um, there are the thin body types, uh, light built, uh, light bones. You can see their skin is very thin. Uh, it's just you see the bones sticking on the back of the hands. They show up, and the veins show up. Whereas the uh, heavy set, uh, you know, athletic built uh, kapha body type has a very thick skin. You can never see the bones anywhere. They're very, very beautifully covered. And so each person uh, responds to food in a highly different way. And it's good to know a little bit about the natural body types that uh, you know, are created. Uh, there are certain uh, types uh, you know, you know, preferred uh, in different countries, like in Mexico, you have more kapha types mm -hmm. than you, for example, have in uh, Denmark. Mm -hmm. do, do you think we, we inherit, I, I guess we inherit some of the, the, the body type uh, tendencies from mom and dad as well. Certainly. Yeah, look at a pitta body type. If, the, if both parents have a fair you know, blonde hair or reddish hair, uh, they will give birth to children that have reddish hair or red hair and freckles uh, you know, in their faces. Uh, and so they, their skin is fair and uh, you know, light-colored uh, sometimes even whitish, and when they go out in the sun, they burn uh, very, they are the first one to get a sunburn. Uh, whereas if you uh, look at a kapha type, they hardly ever get a sunburn. Uh, their, their skin is very thick. Uh, they don't have blemishes on their skin, and uh, therefore they respond to any natural occurrences in a, in a different way. And it's good to know about these timeless secrets uh, because they they are very precious when we when we want to determine our own health. Yeah. Well, I tell you, Andres, I, I've sure learned over the years, I'm a probably vata pitta kind of, with. you can see a lot of my veins are very small, and, and those of us like that, and there are a lot of them out there, uh, thinner folks, it's... Um, it seems like that we have to be very, very careful with the foods. I certainly do. I can't get away with eating a lot of stuff that doesn't work for me because it really, 
it really kind of just makes you crazy. <laughs> that is, and that's actually a sign of good health. Because uh, why, the, why is that a sign of good health? Because the the body is uh, you know always very careful in trying to get rid of something that doesn't belong in there. Ah. So if if you're uh, very congested, your body will not react properly anymore, ah. uh, and that has something to do with the weakening of the immune system. Uh, when there's you know congestion, uh, it's just hard for um, antibodies and other substances that uh, try to engulf. Uh, the toxins and uh, remove them, that ability is diminished when the body is clogged up uh, because the juices and substances are just no longer flowing through the system properly. So if a person has high blood pressure, uh, the, the chances for uh, you, you reacting uh, to wrong foods is actually lower. Wow. Uh, so when the person is actually healthier, cleaner, then uh, he is going to react to something harmful much more readily and is trying to get rid of it uh, you know, very, very quickly. Uh, either you will have diarrhea you know, or, or you vomit or whatever. So these are natural responses by the body to uh, keep itself you know, clean and healthy. Very uh, interesting. So the, the unhealthy person will not react. Um, mm. you know, sometimes people who are very, very unhealthy, they don't catch a cold anymore even. Uh, so they they don't even get the chance to have a good clean out, um, and that's uh, that's a shame because you know uh, gradually the body is accumulating toxins to a point where then suddenly there will be a heart attack or a stroke or something very severe like liver failure or kidney failure that that is very difficult to remedy uh, once the damage has been done. Oh, that's fascinating. So it's much like life, I guess, in a sense, Andreas, where. When we have the little challenges, then we're learning and we have them because we uh, we want to change and grow. And then when we don't even see the challenges, when we're just asleep, well, then they just kind of build up. That's correct, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not right very often, so I hope this is taping this. Uh, it's a 20, <laughs> 28 minutes after the hour. If you have a question for Andreas Moritz... It is 888 So let me ask you about this autoimmune idea. My basic understanding, and I want to know if this is even close. Do you, do you think, with all of your study over 40 years, that the body will actually attack part of itself because it's confused and there's, there's, there's parasites or viruses or bacteria that the common belief of this autoimmune attacking the thyroid or attacking the joints is that going on is that what autoimmune problems are no not really and uh, there's no actual proof that the body is actually trying to destroy itself attack itself inflame itself uh, that is not the entire truth uh, it is a partial truth and sometimes a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. <laughs> so, so the the reason why the body is attacking, seemingly attacking itself, is because the body is attacking something else that's also in the body. And uh, if the if, for example, um, you know, you ingest a lot of foreign substances uh, that uh, are composed of foreign DNA. Uh, such as contained in vaccines, mm -hmm. then uh, these uh, substances, as they assim are assimilated uh, here in the body and uh, start collecting in the tissues, uh, the more vaccines a person gets, the more likely there will be a hyperimmune reaction where, uh, or it's seemingly a hyperimmune reaction, is it's an appropriate immune reaction because the body is just bombarded with uh, chemicals, uh, carcinogens, uh, you know, antibiotics that are all contained in vaccines. And so when the body is trying to identify these substances that have in the tissues and then comes up with an antibody reaction uh, that will then uh, pr you know, lead to a fully-fledged uh, so-called autoimmune response, uh, then I don't think there is anything wrong with that. Uh, it's just that it can... Uh, cause obstruction uh, and it can lead to severe uh, pain and uh, yeah, debilitation. So uh, yeah, it's, it's not something uh, we, we should uh, yeah, deal with at the 
on the effect level or on the symptom level, but we should be concerned uh, where it is coming from. Uh, the, the, the person uh, typically uh, should be exposed to any foreign substances only through the gastrointestinal tract. That's, that's where uh, 60 or 60, 70 percent of the immune system is located, and that's where we have teeth which identify a, a foreign culprit or an antigen. And so when a pathogenic uh, substance or a, a foreign bacteria that uh, could potentially cause damage uh, there, uh, the, the T cells will uh, near deal with that and will basically activate B cells, which then produce antibody complexes. Uh, and so when for future exposures, uh, th there's a need for producing more and more of these antibody complexes, then the immune system will use that uh, to dispose of uh, these uh, foreign substances through a strong, powerful immune reaction. Uh, what we are doing now with vaccines, we are adding adjuvants uh, like aluminum uh, to them, and uh, that is a, a, a that can create hyper immune reactions, very very powerful ones, that then uh, can severely damage the immune system to a point that even a normal smaller uh, allergens or carcinogens or pathogens uh, can no longer be dealt with in the appropriate manner, and that leads to autoimmune chronic autoimmune disorders su such as rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, so it's it's something that we have to be you know, be very careful about, uh, not to blame the body for you know, committing suicide somehow mm -hmm. or destroying its intestines. Uh, I've had uh, many people over the years who had Crohn's disease, and um, they had gone to the Mayo Clinic and uh, other uh, prestigious you know, clinics, mm -hmm. and they sent them home and said they cannot do anything, and uh, many uh, people with Crohn's disease actually die from it. Um, and I don't even consider it to be a, call it an autoimmune disease. But what uh, I usually identify is like a particular culprit, um, and uh, I've taken off so many people with Crohn's disease from dairy products, and they completely recovered and rejuvenated uh, you know, be, be, just because leaving out uh, dairy products, because uh, once you, um, you heat a dairy uh, food like milk, uh, you pasteurize it, it, it creates denatured damaged proteins and uh, any kind of allergic auto autoimmune immune responses to a particular protein fragment. So once you have these uh, de you know, deadly particles floating about in the bloodstream, uh, which can easily be absorbed from pasteurized milk, uh, then the, the body will come up with a reaction, uh, and uh, the more strong the reaction is, the more severe the perceived damage. And when you stop doing that, then the body uh, reverts back to normal. And I've seen it so many times that it is uh, just unbelievable that uh, modern medicine is not even asking questions. What do you eat? Uh, what are the protein fragments? Uh, I've, uh, also seen similar effects with um, you know, people who drink too much orange juice. Uh, there are certain proteins in orange juice that they start reacting to, particularly if they're commercially produced. Uh, or um, peanuts, uh, peanuts. Uh, if, if you eat too much peanuts or peanut butter, which can create rancidity, um, you almost two or three days after you make peanut butter, uh, then uh, the body can react to the rancidity and uh, you create an autoimmune response. So there are simple things that one can do uh, to avoid that and uh, and heal many, many ailments that uh, disappear as quickly as they came hmm. if Perfect. you follow those advice. Yes, yes. Andreas Moritz is with us. If you're on hold, we'll pick it up live, so stay right there. Andreas Moritz's website and all of his books and is uh, inner chi i n n e r i n n e r hyphen chi dot com. He does consultations. People all over the world might be something you want to give yourself for Christmas. Uh, his latest book is all about vaccines. Boy, there's so much stuff going on there. You can imagine how many different products that uh, people have offered to your host here to want me to sell on my radio shows uh, over <laughs> over the years and, and I got love them and 
very, very, very few have I really got behind uh, uh, in a big way. Uh, there's just not that many that are, well, I, I won't go into it, but we really, really like this, uh, this bio superfood, this bio superfood that we've been talking about. And you can go on our, our website and listen to a couple of different interviews we did with Michael Kiriak and also Roland Thomas about this amazing algae, four different algaes after testing literally thousands of algaes that they put together for a synergistic effect. You can click on through our website, the BioAge Superfood, BioFood, Bio Superfood, and right from our front page. And then download a book called Awakening the Genius Within. It's a small book, and you can read it. And it gives you the whole story of how Dr. Kiriak, over many, many years in Russia, uh, came up with this. And uh, it's made in a, a bioreactor thing, and so there's no exposure to any kind of chemicals or, or radiation or chemtrails or anything like that. And uh, you can really feel this product. And there's not a lot of things you can... I, I, I love it. We take it every day. And um, I think you'll like it. Maybe try it for a month or two and just see if you don't... Uh, um, have the same kind of experience and see if it's worth the investment. Right on the front page, BioAge, Bio Superfood, OneRadioNetwork.com, and then you can jump on your rebounder. I'm with Al Carter, the world's foremost authority on rebound exercise. Al, you patented it, designed the rebound air. How can you possibly give a lifetime warranty on a piece of equipment? Because we designed it to be used by the United States Air Force and showed us how we could make sure that the equipment would last a very, very long time. So if a spring breaks or if a, if a mat would rip or something with a leg, you replace it? Yes, call us up and we'll replace it right away. Lifetime? Lifetime. Order yourself a rebounder right now. Front page, look at the display for the rebounders on OneRadioNetwork.com. Go through PayPal, very secure. You don't have to be a PayPal member. Any credit card, ship it via UPS in three days or so. It's all yours right on the front page of OneRadioNetwork.com. When it seems that the only certainty in the world is uncertainty, where do smart investors park their wealth? Many have found satisfaction in owning physical gold and silver in the form of United States coins. USGoldCoins.com is happy to provide physical gold and silver coins to investors and has been doing so for over 30 years. Please call us today and learn how you could acquire for your portfolio the physical asset that will help diversify your wealth in these uncertain times. 1-800-878-2646 or visit us on the web at USGoldCoins.com. Broadcasting from the beautiful Hill Country in Texas, this is OneRadioNetwork.com. Talk to Patrick now, 888-663-6386, or email Patrick at OneRadioNetwork.com. Well, I hope you're enjoying the show as much as I am, because if you are, well then, gosh, man, we got it made with Andreas Smaritz. And it is uh, 21 before the hour, Jack Pruitt. Says the God you may be uh, thinking about, maybe not the right one. Well, that's coming up here. Let's take this call here. Hi, what is your first name and uh, where are you calling from? Uh, this is Francis from Edmonton. Hi, Francis. You're on the air with, uh, you have a question for Andreas Moritz? Yeah, good morning. Good morning. You two guys. Yeah. Hey, uh, Andreas, uh, my MD, right, has said has told me that I suffer from an overactive immune system, right? Mm -hmm. And I know that, I don't know if you can answer all my questions in this short of time, but I can run a few things by you, and I would just like to hear what your comments are, right? Uh, first of all, I haven't had any vaccinations for at least 50 years, right? Uh, secondly, I suffer from... Uh, extreme arthritis. Huh. That's what my doctor says. My autoimmune system is way overactive. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm very careful about what foods I ingest for a lot of years now. And uh, I never catch colds or the flu. Hmm. And I'm just wondering if you can maybe point me in a direction uh, to help, uh, like that may be causing this. 
uh, yeah. my yeah. immune system to overreact. Right? Uh, let me ask Francis and then Andreas will jump in. How long has the, the arthritis been going on? Oh, since I was a teenager. My goodness. My goodness. Yeah. My goodness. How old are you now? I'm uh, 62. Just a kid. So it's yeah, been going on for 40 years? That's correct. My goodness. What do you think about that, Andreas Moritz? Well, uh, you know, I can resonate with that because when I was a child, I suffered from juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Huh. And I could not even eat myself at times, you know, you know, lift a spoon and feed myself. And so when I stopped eating, for example, um, meat, fish, uh, dairy products of any kind except unsalted butter, my rheumatoid disappeared um, within six weeks. Uh, so, so sometimes it's, you would think that we're doing the right thing, but that there may be some substance that our body is re- reacting to and uh, keeps reacting to, and it's a matter of identifying uh, that particular antigen or that, uh, that the body you know, uh, tries to get rid of. Uh, Can I that, interject something? Here? Sure, yeah. sure, go ahead. Like, uh, according to my blood test, that I've had throughout the years, uh, I have no RH factor in my blood, so it's not rheumatoid arthritis. Right. So the you know the the answer uh, to your question could be also found in what is missing rather than uh, what is coming into the body as a potential uh, you know, irritating substance. Um, right. It could uh, be, like I found uh, a lot of uh, rheumatoid arthritis or arthritic conditions related to uh, the inability to digest certain foods. Uh, so the liver is uh, you know, typically congested. That means there are the bile ducts in the liver that have accumulated a lot of stones. And I found that with uh, a lot of people who have arthritic uh, conditions, their bile ducts are often severely congested. So a series of liver and gallbladder flushes uh, often remedies that uh, pretty you know, neatly. Uh, you know, again, I've seen so many people who cleaned out their liver and the arthritis or pain in the body and the deformation of joints uh, disappeared uh, simply because the, the uh, opening up of the bile ducts of the liver increases the... I don't know how we got disconnected, but uh, stay right there, Francis. We're talking with uh, Andreas Moritz. It's 17 minutes before the hour. Somehow we got connected there, but we're going to cook right back up. Thank God for speed dialing. Patrick Timpone, OneRadioNetwork.com, and uh, NaturalNewsRadio.com. 40 years, Francis, of this going on. That's crazy. Boy, that's just... that's. Hi, I'm back. Okay, well, I don't know what happened there. So um, let, me, let me say... Um, uh, ask, have, Francis, have you ever done any of these liver gallbladder flushes? A lot, yeah. Oh, you did. You've done a lot, huh? Yeah, and I'm into. I'm really into raw herbs as well. Too, yeah. So. Well, well, uh, Andreas, I'm wondering, have you ever come across some really um, good, accurate tests to see exactly what kind of foods do? You th- that, that, that we could possibly be reacting to that we don't know? Um, yes, and uh, typically they would be uh, you know, measured uh, by, you know, you can do a simple test. You eat something, and if you find that your pulse rate goes up yeah. uh, way higher than uh, normal, um, then uh, you, you do have, uh, you, you, you should experiment with that food by leaving out, uh, you have a, an improved condition. Uh, then there are other factors that you know, are non-physical altogether, uh, that there are certain issues. And uh, again, there is a lot of scientific research in this field as well. And uh, even the CDC has written about it on their website, that uh, many conditions are related to an unfinished or, or an old conflict that has been there for a long time sure. uh, that has never been dealt with, um, where we are feeling rigid in a certain area uh, in our behavior or relationships. <clears throat> and uh, by making peace with that, um, which is not something I can explain in two minutes, <laughs> 
but yeah. who get into a, a um, calm uh, state of mind. Uh, there are some uh, techniques, you know, sacred santimony, which I do personally, uh, or yeah, emotional freedom technique. There are things you can do for yourself to identify some of the unfinished uh, or conflict situations that may be there or have been there for a long, long time, uh, dating back to the childhood era, uh, where uh, these are still there in the subconscious mind. So, and they yeah. uh, create biochemical changes in the body uh, where when uh, we are reminded of them uh, by uh, eating certain foods, for example, the immune system becomes hyper-reactive and uh, secretes these antibody complexes or um, you have some other reaction that then leads to an, an inflammation. Yeah, Francis uh, and others, uh, thanks for the call, Francis. Hope that was helpful. But we've Can done... I ask one more question? Uh, we really have to move on, Francis, okay? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, but thank you. But, you know, Francis, we've done so many shows on the whole emotional, spiritual component okay. with this. I would look there, but go ahead and ask another question. I, I, I'm sorry, you can, you, we have time. Go ahead. Okay, I'm just wondering, Andreas, is there, like, the condition of my body, is there any way to reverse uh, what's taken place, or am I just wishful thinking here? The calcium uh, deposits in my joints. Well, I, I would never say that a condition is not reversible, um, yeah, because I've seen uh, so-called miracles happening uh, even after a condition has prevailed for 40 years or more. Wow. And uh, so I, I personally suffered from severe debilitating conditions where doctors had told me I had one year to live. And yeah. so I didn't <laughs> believe that. And uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm really you know, in the best of health that I've ever been. And uh, my body is doing everything that I wanted to do. So there's there's just uh, you know nothing in that uh, that you know you have to have and live with a certain condition. Um, sometimes it takes a while to figure out uh, where the causes are because nothing happens without a cause. Every right. effect or symptom is related to an underlying uh, cause. And uh, yeah, in my own case, in in certain you know, with certain regards, it took me 20 years to find out. Uh, how to clean out my liver, for example, um, or find out why sunlight is so important. Uh, the first time I wrote about it, uh, that vitamin D is one of the most crucial substances to have a healthy, balanced immune system. Um, yeah, when I came across uh, the, the studies that were done in the 1920s, uh, how the, the doctors then and there, particularly in Europe, healed tuberculosis, simply by taking these individuals who suffered from it into the high-altitude mountain ranges of uh, Switzerland, and within three, four days they were completely cured, simply because they had suffered from vitamin D deficiency. And uh, so it's, it's a matter of uh, finding out you know, where the original uh, you know, issue is. There's a system called German New Medicine uh, that uh, has some uh, credit, you know, uh, in reversing uh, conditions that are considered irreversible uh, simply by ending an underlying conflict that may have happened a long time ago and uh, that has almost like disappeared from the conscious mind of the person and then uh, you know, balancing that, uh, you know, you know, coming, you know, bringing it to a conclusion and miraculously uh, their health conditions disappeared like magic. Wow, wow. Hey, so, so Andreas, uh, perhaps I should contact you offline here. Yeah, that might be good. Um, yeah, because well, I, I have a feeling yeah, I know. I, know. Uh, I have actually stopped doing health consultations about two years ago. So. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. So, because I'm focusing on writing and uh, you know many other developing some healing modalities uh, and doing a lot of other work, um, which yeah, I, I had to make that decision because otherwise I would never get uh, any new books done. Uh, so, Francis, uh, why not? Why not this? Uh, so, I really support you in this idea that you don't have to believe that you can't turn anything around, right, brother? So, also right. e email me and. Uh, Let's let's put our heads together and see if we can find somebody that you can work with 
that I know or maybe and then see if we can uh, help you get rid of this stuff because we don't want you to be in pain. That's not fun. Yeah, well, I have, like, I know what, I, I have a feeling I know the event that uh, Okay, well, we can, we'll, we'll talk about it then. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Francis. Okay, thanks, Patrick. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, boy. So I, I'm sorry I gave uh, bad information there. Bad uh, earlier. I didn't know you. You didn't do consultations anymore. Yeah, it stopped uh, about two years ago. Exactly two years ago. Uh, it was just too overwhelming in a way that uh, I couldn't uh, do anything. Uh, since then, I've written three new books. Uh, so that that was uh, more productive ever since. So you feel like no. you can you can reach I more. I can reach people. more people. I can share more information than I could uh, on an individual, you know, to individual basis. Yeah. Talk a little bit about this idea, and we've mentioned it on other shows, but I think it's so valuable, this idea of the pulse and trying to figure out what we may be eating, and we just don't know that it's causing our problem, because generally the one that is causing a problem, it's one of our favorite foods. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, sometimes when you feel attached to a particular food, uh, if you ask yourself the question, could I live without that food? And you say, no, 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 this is the last food I want to give up. Then that's usually the culprit food. Um, Is that right? uh, Is that your experience? Pardon me? Is that your experience, really, that the people say, I I really don't want to let go of this one, that that's the problem food? Right. Um, you, it, it typically is. Uh, many people are addicted to sugar, and uh, they actually sh- suffer from a sugar deficiency, but the sugar deficiency doesn't disappear be- be, you know, because they eat sugar. Um, and so uh, diabetes, for example, is a sugar deficiency, but it shows up as a sugar surplus um, and in the blood. And so in reality, it's that the cells are sugar-deprived, um, they have been over the, the body has been overstimulated. For example, if a person keeps uh, drinking uh, two or three Coca Colas uh, every day, uh, regardless of whether they contain artificial sweeteners or real sweeteners like sugar, in both instances, the body will be stimulated to uh, secrete insulin uh, in response to sweet taste that you know. Uh, yeah, occurs when you when the food touches the the tongue, and the taste buds uh, signal there's a sweet food coming in. So the pancreas shuts out, injects insulin into the bloodstream. Then uh, the uh, in the case of uh, real sugar coming in, the, the the insulin takes that sugar into the uh, towards the blood to the cells of the body. The uh, cells will say, hey, that's far too much insulin. Uh, insulin is known to be a leading cause of cancer, so um, they will try to keep the insulin out, uh, and that also keeps the sugar out. But the cells need sugar in order to function and metabolize food. So now you have sugar building up in the bloodstream, and then eventually you have the diagnosis diabetes. Um, but the body is basically a self-protective uh, effect. Diabetes, again, is not a disease. It's the body's way to prevent something far more serious than uh, what the diabetes could be. Um, But eventually it can cause damage to cell groups and entire organs like the kidneys and lead to kidney failure if uh, the person doesn't change the diet and lifestyle uh, that contributes to that. Mm. Uh, Also, if a person eats a steak a day or or large amounts of uh, meat uh, or fish and uh, chicken, then uh, there's uh, a a huge amount of insulin uh, is stimulated to be secreted by the pancreas uh, in order to uh, take the protein, the amino acids that are generated from these foods and synthesize them into proteins, and that requires insulin. And so a huge amount of insulin gets secreted uh, to do that. So when people eat too much of those foods, uh, and according to the big study done, uh, which I mentioned before, uh, that that the meat co- regular meat consumption increases the risk of dying from diabetes uh, by 20%. So that that's a, a huge chunk, uh, you know, of uh, you know, con- you know, a contributor to uh, diabetes and to metabolic disorder. Now, when a person eats uh, Things that are containing contain artificial sweeteners, 
and your pancreas produces insulin uh, to take away that uh, per perceived sugar, uh, but realizes there is not uh, really any sugar there, it will drop the sugar level below normal, which can cause a whole host of different kinds of problems. And the body will try to secrete as much sugar by converting any complex sugar reserves into uh, sugar so that the blood is replenishing its sugar reserves. Uh, but in the long term, that uh, year will uh, not work anymore, and the cells in the body will suffer a similar sugar deficiency as experienced by eating when you eat too much sugar or too many uh, you know, uh, protein foods. Uh, Andreas Moritz, will you explain to us uh, this idea of using the pulse to determine if a food is, is okay for us? When the, the pulse goes up, that means the, the body is uh, stimulated uh, to try to deal with a particular substance. Uh, for example, when the immune system is activated uh, to defend itself or protect itself or deal with an allergen, uh, then the, the pulse uh, will go up uh, because uh, the, the body needs to circulate antibody complexes uh, or, or uh, just do a lot of cleaning out. Uh, in order to do that, a lot more um, blood needs to flow through the system uh, faster uh, in order to accomplish that. So it's a, a quite a uh, simple measure uh, to determine that you have overexposed yourself to a particular substance or harmful substance that then leads to raised pulse rate. Can you tell us exactly how to do that? Uh, you, you basically uh, measure your pulse rate before you eat, and then uh, you eat your food or meal, and then uh, you take your pulse rate again, and if it uh, is, is more, it's higher than uh, 10% or 5 or 10%, then uh, you, you may want to look at uh, what are the foods that you're eating that possibly can contribute to a, an either a, an intolerance to that food or an allergic reaction to that food. So you want to take it maybe on your on your left wrist with your to your index finger and then your middle finger and just kind of press it on there and right. You can and measure, you, know, you, just yeah, you can measure it for ten seconds or fifteen seconds, right? Yes, or for the entire minute okay. uh, if you want to be more accurate. Okay, and then you wait how long after you eat to measure it again? Uh, within the next 10 minutes after eating. That quickly? Yeah. And, and don't move yes, around a lot the, because... The, you immune system, the immune system does recognize something that is of harm right the moment you actually touch it with your fingers uh -huh. or by putting it on the tongue. And uh, so the, if it's a, an immune reaction, uh, it will happen right away. So, and you don't want to move around excessively so you're not getting a raised pulse rate because yeah, of activity. Yeah, it should be both, uh, you know, it should be done uh, in the sitting position where you are basically in the same position before and afterwards, not that you're getting up and walking around and then, uh, you know, sure. taking your pulse right then. So if your pulse is 60 beats per minute, what would what range would indicate that the food is other than the best for us? Where would it have to go? Well, anything like uh, 70, uh, then there's something that you're getting to. Oh, because a 10% increase would, well, 10% would be 66, right? Yeah, anything from 70, 80, that would be um, a sign that there's something that, you know, you, you want to identify as uh -huh. a potential culprit. But once again, once you have identified, it doesn't mean that uh, that particular food, unless it's just chemicals, uh, sure. there, there can be BPAs, uh, if you eat uh, canned food, uh, there can be other contaminants, MSG, which typically raises the, uh, you know, the, the pulse rate uh, that is added to many foods uh, in, in form of uh, many different names. Uh, that yeah, Anything that sounds complex when you read the label, uh, just stay away from that food. Uh, you, anything you don't understand, don't use it. If, if it says just uh, that particular food item uh, or natural things that you know, like you know, there's olive oil in it, then uh, that's absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. So if you would eat a food that had some hidden chemicals or they say natural flavors and there could be MSG or something, that could make your pulse go up as well. 
Oh, absolutely. Uh, your natural flavors doesn't mean that they're natural flavors. <laughs> I know. It's great. They have, the, they have a natural name right. to the flavor, but they're not natural flavors. Yeah, yeah. It's not possible to just extract a natural flavor without putting chemicals in that food first to do the extraction. And so there are always other contaminants in that natural flavor as well, uh, along with the flavor. It's so interesting that uh, you were born in Germany, and, and I suspect that your mom and dad and grandparents, that they probably ate their share of meat and, and dairy, but you do so well without it. Uh, can you explain that? Well, you know, my mother, she had hepatitis uh, three times before I was born. Wow. So by age six, I already had liver uh, problems. Mm -hmm. And so my uncle, who was le the leading iridologist uh, in Germany at that time, he told me I had stones in the bile ducts of my liver when I was six years old. And so that erased my interest in iridology. And so I, I could then look in my own eyes, take photographs, and, and uh, see what was going on. Uh, my, my father died when he was 54 uh, from heart disease. So uh, oh. he, he was eating meat. My mother um, eventually became vegetarian and uh, lived near a good ripe old age. But she, uh, she was, uh, even when she was born, and she was fed uh, with sugar, basically with sweets, for the first 14 years. Uh, her health didn't, you know, it wasn't the best uh, at all. And um, you know, their diet was, uh, you know, meat and uh, high dairy you know, foods. Um, and eventually, you know, it, it caused uh, damage to the kidneys and um, mm -hmm. and the heart. So I I don't uh, recommend that uh, high protein diet. Uh, it's something that is new uh, on the planet, uh, relatively new. If you go back 100 years ago, it was not even 10% of what it is today. Yeah. Well, back then, I think folks, even who lived on the farm, they certainly uh, didn't eat meat every day. It was a... Yeah, and if you even go to the statistical uh, you know, research, you know, that was done uh, in the 90, in the during the war, World War II, uh, World War II, people during World War II when uh, meat and fish and chicken, and all those foods and you know, dairy products were very scarce, um, they, there was virtually no heart disease uh, anymore. Hmm. And then once uh, people became more wealthy again and were able to afford uh, these foods, then heart disease you know, rates shot up again. That's very interesting. Well, Mr. Moritz, thanks so much for hanging out with us. We're a few minutes late, but uh, we really enjoy having you on, and we'll do it again. I hear you're going down Central America for the holidays, so right. uh, nuts and pineapples and whatever they, whatever they do down there. Your website is uh, inner, I-N-N-E-R hyphen chi dot com, and you can find all of Andreas uh, Moritz's books there. Happy holidays to you, sir. We'll see you real soon. Thank you so much, Patrick. Yeah, it's been an honor. Well, he's a good one, isn't he? 40 years, uh, great information. Andreas Moritz. And we are going to talk with Dr. Jack Pruitt, who uh, has spent many years studying the Bible. And he says it's not all it's cracked up to be. Watch out. Here's health motivator Daniel Vitalis and the benefits of using a far-infrared sauna. Sweating is absolutely going to be one of the most critical things discerning people take on so that they can not only stay healthy, but actually so we can continue to have children that are healthy. Uh, we're going to need to sweat. People have sweat all through history. Before the world was toxic, they used that for their health. Now that it's toxic, it's one of the only ways we're going to cleanse our body fat. Our body fat is where we store so much of the environmental pollution. And by the way, one of the great things about sweating is it's how we detoxify fluoride. And so if you've grown up in a place where the water was fluoridated or you used fluoridated toothpaste throughout your life or you got fluoride treatments from your dentist, you can get that fluoride out of your teeth, out of your bones, and most importantly, out of your pineal gland through sweating. Explore a fast, easy, affordable way to detox with the portable Relax Far Infrared Sauna. Great price. Use the promo code one radio. For a substantial discount on OneRadioNetwork.com. We hope you're enjoying the program on One Radio Network, sponsored by USGoldCoins.com. At USGoldCoins.com, we provide the best in gold and silver coins, and we've been doing so for over 30 years. Perhaps you're a first-time investor to gold and silver. 
Perhaps you've been considering adding physical wealth to your portfolio. If you've had any hesitancies at all about looking into this market, now would be a great time to give us a call. 1-800-878-2646 or log on at usgoldcoins.com. We'd be happy to help educate you and provide you with the best in gold and silver coins. Call us today at 1-800-878-2646. Whether you're a seasoned investor or a first-time person to the entire market of gold and silver, we want to be your resource. And you can reach us toll-free, 1-800-878-2646. And that, of course, well, maybe not, of course, if you're new to the show, that is Andrew Goss's company. And uh, you can also talk to Andrew personally, and I'll give you his number here, 800-468-2646. And in this day and age when everybody and their brother, sister, and uncle and aunt are trying to sell you gold and silver, you want to make sure that... uh, You talk to somebody who you trust, and I've known Andrew for hmm, 15 years or so, and I trust him. So there you have it. 800-468-2646. 2646. 2646. 2646. 2646. 2646. 2646. 2646. 2646. 2646. 2646. 2646. 2646. 2646. 2646. 2646. 2646. 2646. 2646. 2646. 2646. 2646. 2646. 2646. 